there's always a sense of form pudding that comes with basements and attics, at least for me. When I was nine, my best friend Jason and I had planned our entire winter project out, his Super Nintendo being the main focus of it. The day school let out for break, we walked to his house and talked excitedly about what the next few weeks would hold. He only lived a couple blocks away from the school, so the weather didn't bother us much, and the walk was fairly short. As we round the corner that led to his home, we noticed the familiar red car was absent from the driveway. Jason's parents were divorced and he lived with his mother, and her not being home after school was a rare occurrence not to be taken advantage of. We sprinted in sight and kicked our snow boots off and tossed our hats and gloves to the floor and met Dash for game system set up in the living room. We got into place and it took us a few minutes to realize something was missing. Oh crap, he said, setting the controller down. All my games are up in the attic. What? Why? My mom cleaned my room and put the box upstairs. He looked upwards, his forehead creasing. Will you come up there with me? It's just the attic, I shrugged, setting my controller down. Just run up there real quick. No, just come on, he pleaded. It's just come on. The fear was dripping off his words. We stood up, and it was at that moment we heard a rather loud bang from upstairs. We froze, and our eyes grew as wide as plates. There was a scratching sound on the floor, like something was being dragged, and then another bang. I moved so I was standing just a bit a little closer to Jason, and we waited for what seemed like hours for something else to happen. Maybe we should just watch a movie or something, he cried amazed. Despite how cold it was inside, I could see a few droplets of sweat at his forehead. I wasn't in much better state. See, I told you, that's why I didn't want to go alone. Well, look, if we go fast enough, it can't catch us, I said. A huge hulking monster couldn't catch this prey nine years old, at least as far as I assumed. We'll grab the games and get out. I can call my dad to pick us up too, if you want. We can stay the night at my house when there was another bed. The sound of the attic door slamming, and we paused again. Then there was a tiny, almost non-existent thump what came from the upstairs leading to the first floor. Jason looked back at me, and it was at that moment I knew we were pretty much fucked. There was another thump, this one sounded like an actual footstep. As the sound descended, it seemed like whatever was making it was trying to stealthy about it and was failing. Then there was a slow, heart-wrenching creak. It was at the bottom of stairs. The only reason I hadn't seen it yet was because of the wall that blocked most of the entry room from sight, which was what stairs entered into. We have to run now. I tapped on Jason's sleeve, my voice as soft as I could get it while still allowing him to hear. Into your backyard. I pointed to the sliding door to the right of us that opened into our snow-covered escape. We don't have shoes. His voice cracked, and I could see him trembling. Just run! I grabbed his sleeve and bolted, slamming the sliding door open and running through the blanket of cold. My feet numbed and my socks grew wet. Jason's leg dragged behind him like rubber, and I nearly fell face first into the snow trying to pull him. I heard the boom of something hit in the closed part of the back door and a cracking sound. Jason's breath caught in his throat. I turned around. The living room was empty. The screen door had a large crack on it, nearly covering the entire thing. Jason was pale white and trembling badly. After a moment, Jason and I were able to move again. We climbed over the fence into his neighbor's yard and got them to let us use their phone, saying we were locked out because he forgot his keys before he left for school. I called my dad to have him come pick us up, and once he arrived, we had him come inside so we could grab our shit and get out. We did go back over to his house. 
and we didn't hear anything. Since then, we have heard it a couple times, and it pounded on the basement door once in the middle of the night. Maybe it's just me, but it was good enough incentive to avoid basements and headaches. <laughs>